This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Kohler. News 25, local news you can count on. Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, a rump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. News is also brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. News 25 is also brought to you by Silver State Health, Pahrump's exclusive pediatric care clinic. Call 775-505-1214 for an appointment. Thank you for joining us on this wonderful Monday, March 15th. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Missy Kohler, and we're so happy you're with us tonight. Well, first responders were at the scene of a head-on crash outside of Beatty on Highway 95 on Sunday morning. The crash was reported around 7.55 a.m. Sunday morning. Crews were dispatched out of Beatty and in Esmeralda County for a serious motor vehicle accident on Highway 95 in the area of mile marker 100. There was a report of a head-on collision between a semi-truck and a vehicle, a car. Uh, as they arrived on location, they found significant damage to both vehicles. They had found through their investigation that one occupant had not survived the impact. That uh, individual was retained in the vehicle, commencing the investigation by NHP. Uh, the truck driver, to the best of our knowledge, was uninjured. The investigation was completed and Beatty Fire then completed the recovery. A two-car accident at a busy Pahrump intersection injured three and redirected traffic on Saturday. We were dispatched to a report of a motor vehicle accident at Winery and Highway 160. As crews arrived on location, they found a two-vehicle accident with vehicles off the roadway, head-on collision, serious injuries incurred. Uh, Mercy Air was added to our assignment. One of those in the vehicles was transported to Mercy Air Base 21 and subsequently flown to UMC Trauma. The other one was transported to our local hospital. The NHP was conducting the investigation as to the cause of the accident. Uh, the highway was partially obstructed for a while as far as emergency response vehicles. Uh, well, Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue is investigating the cause of a fire here in Pahrump that destroyed a motorhome at a residence on Banovich Street. Early this morning, dispatch for a report of a motorhome fire that was located in close proximity to the primary dwelling. As we arrived at the location, we found a windswept fire with the motorhome fully involved. There were exposures, including abundance of personal property as well as the primary dwelling. Crews commenced a defensive exterior attack, which means they stayed outside of the burning building quickly knocked down the main body of fire and protected all the exposure structures. There were occupants in both the primary dwelling and there was an individual living in the involved motor home. It appears to be accidental nature, however, the investigation continues. So we have a pretty good idea what happened, but we want to follow it up with a good investigative uh, lead and also investigate the parameters of the fire. We'll update you on everything happening in the business world right after the break. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment of the news is brought to you by Pahrump Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 10054, open to our veterans and our community. Stop by or give them a call. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Some investors aren't sold on Lordstown Motors. Ulta CEO Mary Dillon is stepping down. And Cedar Fair is hiring thousands as it prepares to open all of its amusement parks this season. Tapping our news, a rough ride for investors in the Lordstown Electric SPAC. According to a report from short-selling hedge fund Hindenburg Research, the electric pickup truck maker has no revenue and no sellable product. The company insists it has received more than 100,000 reservations for its electric truck. The CEO of Alta, Mary Dillon, is stepping down after eight years in the top spot. Alta shares have tripled under the Dillon tenure, even though cosmetic sales are down during the pandemic. Drug maker Novavax reports its COVID-19 vaccine is 96% effective in preventing coronavirus. That news puts Novavax one step closer to getting regulatory approval. And how about some fun? Cedar Fair CEO tells MarketWatch the plan is to hire 45,000 workers and open up all of its amusement parks this summer, including Cedar Point in Ohio. Thanks so much to Angela for that report. Well, there is a fun event happening this Saturday at Nature Health Farms right here in Pahrump on Bernard Street. 
if you would like to get two of our tickets, we're giving away them right now, you need to be the first person to call and leave a message at 775-727-9400, extension 201. That's 775-727-9400, extension 201, and we'll be giving away two tickets. What's happening this uh, weekend is Tatiana's birthday event, and that is March 20th from 11 to 7. They're going to have uh, Cirque du Soleil performers, a clown mime, comedy performances, fire stunts, face painting, balloon animals. You can get your pre-sale tickets by going to Nature Health Farms. Facebook page. Once again, that's at 351 Barnard Street, right here in Pahrump. And so we'll be giving away those tickets. Great event to take the kids and grandkids to. Nye County continues its efforts to get people vaccinated against COVID-19. Director of Emergency Management Scott Lewis says we're making good progress. Friday, we have vaccinated a number of our homeless and also our target groups. And today we are out there doing homebound seniors. So the crews are busy as we speak and they're making sure people get the vaccinations. What types of vaccines are we utilizing here in Nye County? Well, we're actually using a number of them. Uh, we're using the Moderna product and we also have some limited Johnson product, which is actually known as Janssen. And that is a one dose vaccine. We're not getting a tremendous number of those types of vaccines. But those that we're receiving, we're hitting our target groups with those, and uh, that's what we're underway today. If people want to get a vaccination, they can, of course, call the number, but also make their own appointment online, right? They can at nvcovidfighter.org. Well, a lot of things have just kicked off today, and one of them is the Nevada Department of Transportation's bus service, which Salt Lake Express has launched. And this is a bus service happening between Las Vegas and Reno, operated by Salt Lake Express, and they have daily round-trip bus services that connect Las Vegas with various stops here in southern and northern Nevada. Of course, the bus will pick up passengers at McCarran International Airport and the South Strip Transport Terminal. And they offer stops right here in Pahrump, Beatty, Tonopah, Hawthorne, Southern Fallon, Fernley, Reno, Tahoe, International Airport, and Centennial Plaza Bus Terminal in Sparks. Ticket pricing and reservations are available by going to saltlakeexpress.com or you can give them a call 1-800-356-9796. What would you do if your neighbor's dog barked all the time? Now, what would you do if your neighbor had 200 dogs that barked all the time? District Court in Pahrump is trying to work that out right now. Vasily Platinov was in Judge Lane's courtroom this week, once again. This time he was answering to being held in contempt. Platinov is the owner of Est Alpha Kennels, located on East Camellia Street in Pahrump. Platinov has been working with the county and the courts since he was told by the Pahrump Regional Planning Commission that his property was non-compliant due to how it was zoned and how many animals he has on the property. The kennel breeds, houses, and sells Caucasian Oversharka dogs that are often used as security animals. According to the American Kennel Club, the dog can range between 99 and 179 pounds and be 23 to 30 inches tall. AKC adds that this is a guardian breed, not to be taken lightly. In short, this is a big dog. When Platinov was first told in 2009 that he had too many dogs for the area, he was told that he needed a conditional use permit by the Nye County Planning Department to approve the use of his property regarding his dog ownership. In 2010, Platinov received a permit that authorized him to house 30 dogs. In 2015, Platinov asked for an additional number of dogs to be added to his conditional use permit after the number of dogs on his property grew to 130. The Planning Commission denied this request. In 2017, Platinov sued the county, alleging that his property had been grandfathered. His attorney, Thomas Gibson, argued that the use of the property complied with the regulations that were in effect in 2007. The lawsuit was dismissed, siding with the county. After filing an appeal, Frank Carboni, who was commissioner at the time, made an agreement with Platinov that he would remove the dogs by April of 2017. It didn't happen. Platinov has continued to file appeals and not follow through with reducing the number of dogs on the property. Now, there are alleged to be close to 200. Platinov appeared in Judge Lane's courtroom on March 1st for status. Once again, the number of dogs have not yet been reduced. Judge Lane fined Platinov $25 a day beginning December 23rd, and on January 1st, he began fining him $100 per day for each day that the dog numbers were not reduced. Platinov was once again in court on March 9th. This time, seeing no sure solution to moving the dogs, Platinov was given three days to pay his fines, and if that was not completed in three days, he would go to jail for 10 days. 
The deputy district attorney, Marla Zlotez, was trying to avoid a jail situation because there is no one to care for the almost 200 dogs. In the meantime, attorney Gibson says that there is a solution in the works. A person in Las Vegas has offered to help move the dogs. Judge Lane, fearing that this is a story he has heard before, then set a status hearing for March 29th. He said that if the dogs are not moved by that date, then it would mean another 10 days in jail for Platinoff. Neighbors in the surrounding area have filed numerous complaints. It's a lot of dogs urinating, defecating. It's a problem. You can't let the kids play outside. Uh, the noise is, in, is it's crazy. Platinoff's attorney, Thomas Gibson, isn't buying into the neighborhood complaints. Uh, Mr. Platinoff has had a difficult time moving his dogs from their present location. We're trying to get them moved into, right now it looks like, possibly either Beatty or Amargosa where there's no zoning issues. But my biggest complaint against the uh, people that are here, the, the mob from the neighborhood, most of them aren't even, don't even live there. They're friends of people who live there. And the people who actually had property, have property there, the lo closest one is 800 yards away, and she lives in California. I, and I understand th they would get frustrated because they want Mr. Platten a lot of the neighborhood, but they inflate and conflate and, uh, and exaggerate. Also sympathetic to the kennel's plight is Commissioner Frank Carboni. I believe that facility in his heart wants to make sure that his animals are taken care of and he wants to get them moved. We're also working with rescues uh, to have some of these animals moved. You know, we would love to have uh, rescues uh, step up and see if we can get one or two dogs moved from every rescue. These are great dogs. Everyone is hoping for a solution to reducing the number of dogs. Gibson stated that at one time, Platinoff was working with Homeland Security, who was considering the use of the dogs for border security. But for now, finding property appropriate for the large kennel is priority. We've got more News 25 coming right up. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by Canyon Ridge Periodontics. Give them a call at 702-966-0302. Well, Knight County offices are fully open beginning today. All other COVID prevention requirements such as face coverings, distancing, sanitizing, etc. will remain in place. Each office will restrict the number of visitors to its lobby. Many other public services will remain available online at nightcounty.net and through each department's web pages. If you want more information, once again, go to nightcounty.net website for department contact information, office hours, and any current COVID-19 related restrictions. Now that we've sprung forward, you may be feeling that lost hour of sleep. It may not seem like much, but losing even an hour in an already sleep-deprived society can have health implications. Research have shown an association with increased risk for a stroke, heart attacks, car accidents, um, and also we have seen in some, in some research a spike in depression episodes. Dr. Cynthia Pena is a sleep specialist with Cleveland Clinic. She says the pandemic has wreaked havoc on sleep. People are feeling more stress and anxiety, which can disrupt sleep. In addition, our schedules are out of whack due to homeschooling and remote work, making it difficult to maintain healthy sleep habits. Also, when we're not commuting to work in the morning, we're exposed to less light, and our bodies need daylight to help regulate our internal clock. Daylight saving time adds to the sleep deprivation we're already experiencing. So how do we overcome the tiredness we're feeling? Dr. Pena says exposure to sunlight will help, so get outside if you can. You may also benefit from a quick cat nap. It will be good to take a nap. So as long as it's a power nap of 15, 20 minutes, no more than that, that will help people to feel uh, rejuvenated or feel better during those episodes where they feel a little bit drowsy or sluggish. Dr. Pena says exercising in the morning is another way to perk yourself up. She says exercise increases your body's temperature, which helps wake you up and will allow you to function better. Thanks to Brad Francis for that report. Well, if you're thinking about adopting a pet, why not check out one of our local shelters? For today's Save a Pet, Darby O'Donnell introduces us to Charlie, a lovable pooch whose owner decided that they no longer could keep him. Today's Save a Pet is proudly sponsored by Jason Ernest with Mountain West Lawyers. Call 775-727-9500. 
Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Charlie. Charlie is a sweetheart. Um, he is a golden retriever, but his hair is definitely a lot more red. Um, he's like a red retriever. He is the friendliest dog. He is 11 years old. Um, he was a little bit lonely, they say, and he got out of his yard. Um, when they did contact the owner that he was here as a stray, the owner decided no longer that they wanted to keep him. So Charlie's looking for his forever home now. Um, he is 11 years old. He has the personality of a three-year-old, um, extremely active, super playful, very, very, very friendly. Um, he does well with children, um, strangers, other dogs. He's just the perfect family dog. Charlie is on schedule to be neutered this next week, so he'll be all good to go for an adoption. And if you know anything about um, golden retrievers is that they are very high energy at first. They're extremely active, extroverted kind of animals. Um, but once they get used to their family, they're very lazy. They like to go and be with you and be around the house and be with their kids and their family. He is a gem. Do not mess up on Charlie. So if you want to come and see him or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, please give him a call ahead of time to make an appointment. 775-751-7020. You can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. Bye, Charlie! News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Kind of cloudy, a little gloomy looking outside. We could use a little rain though, right? Yes. A little rain won't hurt anybody. John's got your full weather forecast coming right up. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee. The dollop of sour cream on your burrito. The melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious. Undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. It's a wonderful Monday and let's just go right to the weather and take a look at the board up and down from uh, Fernley all the way down to Goldfield. Ugh, 42 degrees is about the average high. Lows at night in the mid-20s. Uh, Beatty, you're seeing a little bit warmer, 54 degrees. Good for you. Amargosa in Las Vegas, stuck in the low 60s. Not great. Uh, Death Valley, pretty good. 74 degrees for a high today, 47 for a low. And here in the Paradise of Rump, 47 degrees is our current temperature. It got all the way up to 58 degrees, so blustery this afternoon. Man, uh, stuff blowing across the yard. Big gusts, 24 mile per hour average uh, wind speed. 44% humidity gave us a lot of clouds this morning as the sun rose through the magic of daylight savings time a little uh, later today, 6.54 a.m. It'll set this evening in a little while, 6.51 p.m. Make a nice uh, evening for us, 47 degrees uh, currently. 34 is where we're heading down to tonight, so yeah, you might want to put on a sweater, maybe put a little fire in the fireplace. It'll be good. Have some cocoa. East southeasterly winds calming down a little bit to 15 miles per hour tonight. Uh, humidity sticking with us, but tomorrow, let's check it out. Uh, wonderful day. Look at that, seven mile per hour winds, not too bad. A little bit cloudy, so about 60 degrees. Uh, we're gonna see temperatures scooting all the way up to the low 70s uh, by Friday. Um, we're gonna get some wind and bluster on Friday, blowing out the clouds. Have a nice clear weekend coming up this weekend and uh, temperatures in the mid 60s. Not too bad, not too bad, I'm kinda loving it. So uh, enjoy that in here uh, in Southern Nevada, beautiful weather. Uh, back to the desk, it's Missy and Deanna. Thanks so much, John. Well, if you are 15 or going to be by April 1st, yeah. you can get a job. There's a job available right now. The Town of Frump is looking for responsible, mature, motivated lifeguards for the 2021 pool season. You remember last year, we didn't have enough staff there, so the pool couldn't open. We're at that point once again right now. So if you are available, um, they will train you and get you certified and everything. So you have to be at least 15 by April 1st. All right, lifeguards and cashiers, spread the word. Let everybody you know know that they are looking to hire people. You can download the application from nycounty.net or email human underscore resources at nycounty dot or at co.ny.nv.us and request an application. Employment opportunities and descriptions are located on the website. Check it out. Get a job for the summer at the pool. All right. Of course, the neighborhood cleanup is going to be happening on the 27th. That will be from 9 until 1 p.m. And we're meeting at the Bob Rude Community Center on the Carolina Basin on Highway 160. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. I'm Deanna. I'm Missy. Have a good one.